I am Dr. V. Mohan, Chairman of Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Speciality Center and President and Director of the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation. I am a clinician but very much interested in genomics and in precision diabetes. The term precision diabetes, uh, until about five years ago, nobody was even talking about it. I think the first field where precision medicine started really taking off was oncology in cancer. Because we know, for example, take breast cancer. All breast cancers are not the same. There are hormone positive, there is hormone negative, there is triple hormone positive, triple hormone negative, all types. Today, the oncologist does not treat without doing, say, hormone testing or I won't say genetic testing is being done, but without some precision being applied, all breast cancers are not treated in one way. So they are far ahead. The oncologists are far ahead. As far as diabetes was concerned, uh, there was a tendency to lump everything as one disease, give everyone metformin. If that doesn't work, then you give something else. That is how diabetes is being treated. I'm ashamed to say. Today, we know that in uh, the common forms of diabetes, like type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes, already precision medicine has started coming. For example, in type 2 diabetes, there are four subtypes. And those four subtypes are treated in different way. One will have only insulin deficiency, one will have only resistance, one will have both. One is a mild age-related diabetes. So these four types cannot be treated in the same way. Similarly, in type 1 also, we're beginning to see some changes. But the major change in precision diabetes has come in monogenic forms of diabetes. This is where, by doing genetic testing, we're able to identify a single gene defect. We're able to say it's due to this gene that this particular child got diabetes. And very often, we're able to change the treatment based on that genetic test. When I talk about monogenic forms of diabetes, there are at least two common forms. One is called MODI, it's M-O-D-Y, not M-O-D-I. So maturity onset diabetes of the young. This form of diabetes comes at young age. They are wrongly diagnosed to have type 1 diabetes and charter on insulin. But by looking at the clinical profile, the history and so on, we'll say this, this is not type 1 diabetes and this is MODI. Now, if we do the genetic testing, we can find out which type of MODI it is. And the common forms of MODI, like MODI 3, MODI 1, MODI 12, MODI 2, all these don't require insulin at all. You can completely stop the insulin and change that child or young adult uh, to tablets. And they're very, very grateful if you're able to do that. Even more spectacular is the case of neonatal diabetes. Neonatal diabetes, as the name itself suggests, comes when the child is newborn. Just born, first day, second day, two weeks, one month, three months, up to six months. After six months, we very rarely see neonatal diabetes. After one year, it doesn't come at all. So if it comes after one year, it is type 1 diabetes. You have to treat with insulin only. But if the child has developed, say, at third month or fourth month or fifth month, genetic testing is mandatory. It has to be done because it is life-changing for that particular child. Otherwise, you don't do it. You'll just put all those children on insulin. And very often, if you find the type of uh, gene mutation, for example, two common ones, KCNJ11 and the ABCC8 mutation in neonatal diabetes, instantly you can stop insulin and just change the child over to the cheapest tablet, libentlamide. It's the cheapest tab anti-diabetic drug you can get. Hardly costs one rupee. So if you're able to change the child over to that, they respond beautifully. In fact, they do much better. So I would say in any child below six months of age and whenever you suspect maturity onset diabetes of the young, it is mandatory to do genetic testing. I knew uh, the next question will be when you say it's mandatory and in India people pay out of pocket. Uh, how do you uh, then uh, look at the cost? Well, the costs for one thing have come down. So uh, if you look at the costs in India, they are a fraction of what it will cost in the US. It will cost, you know, $100 or $50 or something like that. That will be clearly unaffordable for, for people in India. But here we are doing it for a few thousand rupees. For example, the neonatal diabetes testing can be done for 2,000 or 3,000 rupees. Unimaginable that you can do that in the US for that cost. And even for Modi genetic testing, even if you do the full panel, we only charge about 12,000 rupees or so. So it is not unaffordable as, uh, as it is in many other situations. However, it's like doing a CT scan or an MRI. People do all that. So like they're doing a genetic test should not be very difficult. Having said that, there are a lot of people who simply cannot afford it. So what we have done is, through the support of the government, either through the ICMR, through their grants, where they support free testing as a service, we do that because it's life-changing. 
or through various charities which pay for it. Or we just take it uh, on ourselves and we have set apart a fund from that from our, from our hospital resources and from our private resources and say no child in India should go without that genetic testing because 2000 rupees if the child cannot afford, we will pay for it and we will help the child to get the genetic testing done. So ideally they should start reimbursing it or insurance should pay or somebody should pay but until then we are not waiting. We cannot allow this child to die or be wrongly treated with insulin or something when it is not needed. So I think we will find uh, the means and there are many people where many situations where Lions Club or Rotary Club comes forward if you say can you sponsor five children 10,000 rupees it's nothing for them they will they will give it. So I think in India a lot of people have a good heart and so if you if you really need something and if you reach out to people there are people willing to support. A lot of charities, a lot of CSR kind of thing. They'll come and ask us, what can we do? And we'll say, we have all these children, can you support? And they'll say, yes, we'll be happy to support 10 children, 15 children, whatever. So then it's a win-win for everyone. For the company also, CSR is a win-win. For the patient, it's life-changing and it's free. For us, we are also doing some uh, service or seva. So we are also very happy.